Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I wish to thank Rabbi Shmuley and the World Values Network for having considered me and inviting me to be honored tonight. I am humbled and deeply touched by this recognition. I also thank Michael Steinhardt for his kind introduction. Many of you here tonight know that Iran has a foundational connection to the universal concept of freedom. The Cyrus Cylinder is considered to be the first charter of human rights in which Cyrus the Great freed the Jewish slaves in Babylon and helped them rebuild their temples. 25 centuries later, during the dark time of the Second World War, when most of the world was turning a blind eye to the decimation of European Jews, Iran was one of the few countries that welcomed and sheltered Jews that escaped Europe. A fact, <laughs> a fact that is a source of pride for my country and my family. But while Iran has this proud history, my own compatriots have been held hostage for 37 years by a clerical regime that abuses the very notion of freedom. Since I left my beloved Iran, I have dedicated my life to fighting for my compatriots' freedom and their human rights. I do appreciate the fact that by recognizing my efforts, you have demonstrated your care and concern about the plight of the millions of Iranians who have suffered under the repression of the clerical regime ruling my homeland. I dedicate this recognition to the brave Iranians who have lost their lives in the struggle and to those who continue to fight for freedom. <laughs> to General Rahimi, Khosrodad, and Jahanbani, to Prime Minister Hoveda and our first female minister, Farah Parsa, and many other brave military and civil servants who were executed shortly upon Khomeini's return to Iran. To Prime Minister Shapur Bakhtiar, Fereydun Farrokhzad, and many other dissidents who were assassinated on foreign soil by the regime's terrorists. To Neda Aqa Sultan, Muhammad Mukhtari, and so many young protesters who were killed during the 2009 Green Movement. To 17-year-old Mona Mahmoud Nejad and Simin Saberi, who were executed for being Baha'i, and to all those Baha'is who were forced into exile. To Christian priests and converts, Haik Hovsepian, Mehdi Dibaj, and Tatos Mikaelian, who were all murdered because of their faith. To countless members of the Iranian Jewish community, so few remaining, mostly now in exile, who have always defended their Persian heritage with passion and stood up to the clerical dictatorship. <laughs> to the Gonabadi Darvishes and all persecuted Sufis. To Ayatollah Kazemin Burujerdi, who has been jailed and tortured for many years but who continues to bravely preach secularism and the separation of religion and state. And to all civil activists, journalists, lawyers, workers, students, and educators who have defied repression and continue to fight injustice in our national struggle for freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, the list of atrocities is long but the extent of the regime's damage to our society is not limited to discrimination, torture, and executions. This regime has also destroyed an economy that once had the highest GDP in the region prior to the revolution. It has turned Iran into a pariah state and has also destroyed Iran's delicate environment. I am particularly concerned about the extremely serious damage to Iran's ecosystems particularly as it relates to desertification, mass soil erosion, and poor water management. 
Iranians devastated by desertification may now be forced to migrate to other regions of the country with very little chance for employment, housing, and access to resources. We have already seen, sadly, in the news, Iranians counted among the flood of human misery that is washing up on Europe's shores. Officials have predicted that in the next decade, millions of Iranians will be migrating from Iran. This will certainly mean a greater number of refugees attempting to reach Europe or take the sea to reach the coast of Australia, increasing the instability to world order. Ladies and gentlemen, you may ask yourselves, why have we come to this? Well, it is very apropos that we are gathered tonight in the spirit of values. I have argued all these years that what we face today is not, as some politicians or journalists have described, a clash of civilizations or a war of religions. Rather, I believe that we are experiencing a war of values. There are those like us who believe in human rights, equality, and who stand united against all kinds of discriminations. And there are those like the Islamic Republic and ISIS of this world who believe in the domination of a single perverted ideology at the expense of all those who do not belong in their gang. Let me be clear, we cannot coexist, period. This is a real battle. Only one side will prevail. The ultimate question is, are we as dedicated to fight for our shared values as the other side is? I say we better be. Thank you very much.